Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Remix Podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Davis. And I'm DJ Image. Hey, Image, how was your week? My week was okay. You know, I actually just went to, I know this is going to sound funny, it's going to make us sound really old, but the drive-ins are still open. So I went to the drive-ins and saw, um, we saw Deadpool last week. What did we see this no time? No spoilers. Oh, it's so, <laughs> so good. It is so Have good you guys seen see Deadpool? It. It's such a funny um very um gay <laughs> movie yeah yeah i think deadpool is like a pansexual character yeah yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah he's yeah. very much uh there's a lot of gay jokes in there for sure yeah so yeah i just had a chill weekend i didn't do i didn't do much i, I went and checked out a couple of uh events that were going on in the valley and uh, a couple of venues and stuff like that but other than that it was a very productive chill weekend i went swimming and and drank a little bit, which I haven't been drinking in a long time. So that was chill. That's cool. That's cool. How was yours? Um, well, so this weekend we had a, um, and I was telling everyone this story a minute ago, but I'm going to tell it now on the podcast. So my sister, uh, she graduated from GCC's uh, EMT program. So we're super proud of her. Um, yeah, That's we're, awesome. we're super proud of her. Um, and she, uh, she's just starting like a whole new life for herself. And I'm just, I'm so proud of her anyway. So she did that and you know, she was really scared. She wasn't cause she, like school's never been her thing. And like, you can't fail a quiz or you have to like completely, they withdraw you and you have to do it again. Like you have to pay for it and take it again. Like, oh my God. It's just like a thing. So she worked. I mean, so she it's studied. not like, it's not like getting your CPR card. No, no. <laughs> she studied and studied and studied and studied and she passed. And so, you know, we're super proud awesome. of her. And so anyway, so on Friday we had her uh, surprise, uh, surprise party. So I'm sitting there and I've been in love with El Himador brand came out with these like drinks these canned drinks right i thought they are were they the ones that were, were, were um you were drinking last week too yes i did drink oh, them during the podcast last yes. week no that was water in my no cup. you were drinking water <laughs> it was definitely those i've been drinking them like they're yeah because i style. remember last week you're like oh these are so good and you're like handing them out like water and they're shit. so good i i need them to hire me el Himador, if you need a brand ambassador. we need a sponsor we do need a sponsor i will pass those things out everywhere i go <laughs> The only thing is, um, I thought there were seltzers, and most seltzers are gluten-free, and I happen to be gluten intolerant. Um, I know that uh, you might say that's white people shit, but that is Jimmy people shit. <laughs> well, I thought so. you usually read like everything you get, yes. so I'm surprised you didn't read this. I, I'm very on it, but it, I thought it was a seltzer, and like most of the time, the seltzers are, are gluten-free. Mm -hmm. But I'm sitting there with my friends or whatever, and I'm telling them about them. They're so good. I'm like, you gotta try it. Blah blah blah. I'm like giving them out. Mm -hmm. Like I'm serious. Like I'm, I'm like their brand ambassador. Anyway, I happen to just look at the can, and I notice it says malt beverage and i'm like oh my goodness well i haven't been feeling good for the last <laughs> couple of weeks and i've been drinking those for the last couple of weeks so now you know why they contain gluten oh well there you go so it's been jacking me up so like you figured joints. it out during the party i figured it out during the party i had already cracked one open and started drinking it <laughs> but i was telling them about it so i happened to be reading the can and i am the most like i look at everything everything i consume i'm that person at the restaurant like asking a million questions about what yep. they put in what so you know i usually go to the same places so i know what to order and i don't know what's been up with me lately I've or he been, won't he won't eat at all if they don't have something in particular yeah, yeah. because it's just not it's and you not worth drank it a i did drink a lot of those yeah i did i did <laughs> i was drinking them like water honestly i thought they were so delicious they are very delicious i do recommend you buying them they're they're maybe really, you really could good. have like one no no, or half a one not. and some water. Definitely not. Like my joints were achy. Like yep. my stomach was kind of like not right. Like yeah, it just, I just wasn't right for like several weeks. And I just, I don't know. I was like, I probably have an infection. I'm thinking I'm dying. <laughs> <sighs> nope. There was, I, I was poisoning myself basically. So that he that was probably thinking it was something else and freaking out. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Cause any little thing, like any, anytime I get like a cold or any little infection, my immune system over, just, it goes crazy it. it overreacts and then i'm like not feeling good even more so like i'll get over being cold having a cold and then i have like a flare-up for like five days after it it's just not fun <laughs> but in this case it was my own fault so i can't blame jeremy children or adults i think time. it was like that so. one time i saw jimmy at the club and he was dancing having a good fucking time and then the next day i see him he's like with his little walk <laughs> with his fucking walker and i was like jimmy i was like were you not just like 
in your underwear last uh, night all, dancing, I'm, I'm, getting yeah, crazy? I'm, I am not in my underwear. Ever I did have a photo bar. up, but he had me delete it. I was not in my underwear for the record in that photo. What is it called? Sis and what is it called when someone makes you like take something down? Or censored? Like, you were censored. It was yeah. a horrible picture of me, first of all. I looked like. He looked really nice. No. My clothes did. I, my, I look like a gremlin yeah, yeah. in that picture. I'm like, this picture has got to go. It was not <laughs> flattering. I look fat. I'm all sweaty. I'm going to make like a big no. uh, cutout of it and, and have it in the front of all my events for now. Horrible, on. horrible picture. <laughs> horrible. Well, anyway, so you found out. Yeah. So you I, almost died. So I didn't almost die, but I was uncomfortable for like days, and that's why. So... Anyway, not, no more of those for me, but I do, like I said, they're really good. So try them if you haven't. They're hard to find because they're pretty new. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyway, so we did that on Friday. And then um, on Sunday, my friend from Connecticut was in town. So he uh, usually, he, he's Hopi. So normally when he uh, comes to town, he drives up to the reservation. And then, you know, we spend, we spend time either at the front end or the back end of a strip. Um, so we got to spend two days together. It was a lot of fun. We've known each other, psh, oh my God, since our... Since our twenties, uh, which is a long time ago now, but uh, yeah. So so anyway, we had you a really know, back in the day. Yeah, back in the day when Ernesto was uh, <laughs> furniture at Charlie's. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we talked about that earlier. Um, no, but uh, but it was really fun. We had a really good time, and then you know we we hung out all day Monday, and and you know got to do some fun stuff. So I had a, I had a really good time. I, I honestly I was telling him I feel like I'm on vacation because we were like. We were in North Phoenix, and then we were in Tempe, and I don't ever just go to doing Tempe. shit that you usually. Yeah, I don't ever go. To I was places, thinking about that so. because um, next this coming up week, we're gonna go to Flagstaff uh, for Taryn's birthday, and I was like, How old is he turning? Is he expired yet? <laughs> he's almost expired. Yeah, twenty seven. Oh, he's expired. You expire at twenty six. <sighs> yeah, we're on the Leo and DiCaprio plan. We're like exactly ten years apart, but no biggie. But what I was saying, 15, you liar. 10. <laughs> what I was saying is things pop up and you kind of get surprised. You're like, oh, shit, I live here and they have these cool things because I never knew about some of the shit that they have. Like in Flagstaff, like there's so many things you could do. There's a lot of things to do up, up north in general. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I guess we're going to check out that Arizona that you did not like. I like Arizona. I was just we Lit. came from a hype weekend. And then we went to Arizona, and that's just not. We also were lit. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. He too, was like driving was around, chill. just fucking wishing he was at a rave or something it's like that. It's true. It's true. It's because it was like after that Pride weekend and all that craziness, and you know. So it was. It was what it was. It, it was. I mean, I like Arizona. It's cute. It's yeah, cute. You it's gotta cool. experience it once. I think I like Out of Africa better. Um, which is on the way back. I, I did that when we were during quarantine, you know, how they were yeah, letting so you go I. to the zoo and drive around the zoo. and But that one, um, I felt like I saw a lot of animals. Oh, I haven't been to Arizona, but from what you said, I felt like I'm going to see less animals than I did at the out of Africa. They have a lot of animals. There's a lot of exhibits, um, but it depends on like the time of day, what the animals are doing, and they're in like smaller areas too. So you're, I think you're more likely yeah. to see more animals. But I think when we went there, it was like nap time for everyone, <laughs> so they were like hiding. Well, I better go when it's so, time to eat because yeah, you, you, it'd probably be better. It was like midday when we got there. It's probably better like earlier. I would assume oh, okay. the animals are up and around doing their work for the day or whatever. I don't know, whatever animals do. So <laughs> Work for the day. Um, well, they got to, like, get food and do whatever they do. They don't do shit. They throw the food no, right at them. that's not true. They do things. So. All right, you ready for some hot topics? I am ready for some hot topics. Hot topics. There we go. There we go. Oh. Our little graphic. Look at that. It's cute. I do a good job designing these damn things. You're so good. I'm actually going to start uh, hiring out my services if you want flyers or graphics made. Let me know. Apparently, I'm a graphic artist now. That's what I do. Ask me to draw a straight line, though. All right. You can go back to the other the podcast names we have. Should we? We didn't even announce our... Oh, yeah. We have our brand new intern here at the podcast. Bow, 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 bow. Giovanni. You have a mic. You can say hello. You want to say hello He's to... To all our millions of fans watching the podcast right now. Right now, we have 115 to viewers. All millions. Millions, millions, millions. Anything you want to say? Um, no, not much. Enjoy okay. the show, guys. You want to tell us like tell us three things about you? Yeah, tell us three things about you. Three things about me. Um, 
This is such a hard question. He's not on OnlyFans. He's on Just for Fans. Yeah, I'm on Just for Fans. Awesome. You can subscribe. I already I'm do. Just kidding. I'm now. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Gigi. I'm 26, turning 27. I'm expired. You are expired. That's true. Um, and yeah. That's Perfect. That's <laughs> well, we'll definitely bring you on so people can see you later on tonight and ask you a couple oh, more questions. Why don't you uh, quickly give us your social? Like oh, yeah. Social so security card. Yeah, go ahead. I'll take your social security number. Uh, 513. No, just Blood kidding. type. <laughs> just uh, my social is uh, Gigi Giovanni Ray. So G-I-G-I -G -I Giovanni and then Ray, R-E-Y. Okay. Follow me. He Hi. has some great stuff on TikTok, you guys. So if you want to check him out, make sure you go to his TikTok and mm -hmm. look at some of his stuff. Yep. Same same name for TikTok and Instagram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's going to have a segment on the podcast coming up pretty soon, too. That's so you'll fun. see that about once a month. So it's going to be fun. He's going to be out on the street asking questions. And he's going to be out in the streets for <laughs> sure. <laughs> that sounds funny. <laughs> We're going to put his ass out there in the streets. He's going to make us some money. We're it's sending gonna be fun. It's going to be Gigi's journey. I love it. Can't wait. It's going to be great. Can't wait. So right. I so. know you have some great hot topics for us. So uh, former Arizona Governor Doug Douche, uh, Ducey. Ducey. Excuse me. I misspoke a little bit. He, <laughs> I love this headline from AZ Central, actually. So I'm just going to read it verbatim. Let's hear it. Doug Ducey ditches his dignity to endorse Donald Trump and Carrie Lake. So former Arizona governor Doug Ducey has now officially endorsed not only Donald Trump, but Carrie Lake. So this this article actually goes on to call him uh, a doormat, which is, I think, kind of funny. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of Republicans that are coming out and they're endorsing uh, Kamala Harris. And uh, he decided to stick to his guns, I guess, and endorse uh, Donald Trump and and, and Carrie Lake, I think that's... Uh, that's Disgusting, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's that. So <laughs> if you didn't know that he was a piece of work already, now you do. So, um, Also, um, they let Donald Trump back on Twitter, also known as X. Yeah, he, w he went live. Him and... Um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. Yeah, they were, they were live yesterday for like, I don't know how long it was. I, I clicked on it to listen to it for a little bit, and then I was like, yeah, I'm done listening. They're, they sound like some dickheads. Like the the shit that they're talking about on there and how they were the stuff they were saying. I'm just like, this is crazy. Well, he during that interview he went on to call uh, Kamala Harris a beautiful woman, which he of course didn't mean as a compliment. Um, he he's just such a I can't I can't with him. They were saying crazy and things like the things are like one of the things he was like he was just calling. Like, they were talking just like you would talk with your homies, like, with your friends, you know, like, calling girls uh, nasty uh, sluts, basically, and things like that. I'm like, you want to be our next president, and you're on Twitter talking like this? This he's, is He's our former president, which is even worse, even worse I think. You know, I, I, just, I just don't understand it. Like, I, I love that I'm seeing a lot more Republicans, and we'll call them Republican classics, because I think they don't fit their party anymore, coming out and endorsing you know, the, the Democratic candidate because they want to make sure that our country is okay, right? Uh, I like what the, the mayor of Mesa said. Um, the f is he the current mayor or is he the former mayor? I think he's the current mayor still, that Giles guy. Do you guys know? Anybody know? Former? He's not the current mayor? I think he's the current mayor. I don't know. Well, anyway, what did maybe he current or former. But he is endorsing Kamala Harris uh, for the president, and he basically said uh, that he, he might not agree with Kamala Harris on policy, like anywhere at all, but he knows that she's going to do what's right for the country, mm -hmm. right? And he doesn't, or, or she's going to do things in the best interest of the country, and she's always going to put the country first. Donald Trump is not. Donald Trump puts Donald Trump first, and that's it. And I mean, that's just, that's, I mean, that's, that's our choices. Those are, these are our two choices. We have binary choices. Yeah. You know, you can vote Democrat, or you can vote Republican in this election, or you can, I guess you can vote independent, but th that's not going to get you anywhere. Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's just, it's crazy. I don't understand how people can still follow this man. He continues to just show who he is, which is just a piece of crap. Yeah. Well, I'm I not a good human being. I definitely uh, feel good about what's going on now than what I did a couple of weeks ago. So I think that we're in a in a great path. And uh, when she was here, uh, when Kamala Harris was here the other day, she sold out the arena over at Westgate. It was twenty over 20,000 people. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I, I got to listen. I wish I could have gone, but we were having the party for my sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I listened a little bit on the radio, and I mean, you, just the energy and the crowd. She's really engaged the bass. I think she's really engaged uh, young people, and it's just it's just good all around. So you can come in. Don't be shy. DJ Image had to order his food during the <laughs> podcast, so our DoorDasher's here. Oh, we're, we're, that's we're, funny. Hold on. We're literally live right now. You want to come Wait, over come here? Come over here. You want to be on the podcast? What's your name? He's all with the mask. He's like, what is happening? Gracias. This is, this is our door dasher. This is my door dasher. He brought my food. Ahí está la cámara, mira. Camera's right Ahí there. Gracias. Muchas gracias. See? All right, so. A little cameo. My food. <laughs> I cannot. I mean, I asked the intern. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, Lord. To be fair, we were messaging and we agreed outside. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's funny. It's okay. Wow. No, we love that. That's, that's, icon awesome. that's iconic. That that happened. That's fine. <laughs> Anything can happen live, right? So that's that's just what happened. Um, okay. So anyway, so maybe you're messaging your grinder and tell them you'll miss them, miss meet them outside. Get on grinder, babe. Oh, so you want to fight for my food? Okay. No, go oh, ahead. Oh, you're okay. Take your time. Yeah. You can stay and watch the podcast if you want. We don't care. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you don't know and you want to come, we, we do like having a live studio audience here at Jimmy Davis Music in Tolleson. We're at 9354 West Van Buren Street in beautiful Tolleson, Arizona. That's right. So if you guys want to come down um, and hang out with us, Jimmy usually has drinks and food for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That was fast. Yeah, I was actually going to make a, a charcuterie board today, but I ran out of time. So sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> I've been wanting one. Yesterday, I went to bar one, and they sell a charcuterie board. Oh, and they have this my little God. Menu. Is it? And so ahead. then I'm like, what, uh, what comes on what, your what's charcuterie in it? board? And he starts telling me, and he's like, look, look. It's some. It's two, like, fancy Lunchables. <laughs> And I'm all, well, can I see them? So he shows me the Lunchables. And it was like all kinds of glutinous stuff. So I'm like, okay, I don't want that. And then I look and I see that they have chips and guacamole on their little menu. And I'm like, what's in that? He's like, look, dude, it's not a restaurant. <laughs> like, it's just chips well, it's the and guacamole. That's it. It's the menu that they had during quarantine. Do you remember they could open up the bars that they had like a little bit of food? Yeah. So they started that. But before it was just um, those like nuts in a in a package and they would just throw them in a bowl and give you a couple of cheeses <laughs> <laughs> and then that was their thing but you had to order in order to be there yeah, to yeah, drink yeah, and yeah. hang out and, and eat and they had like little sections and stuff that was crazy times it, it was really crazy. i was working at um charlie's at the time and it was basically a restaurant like we had tables yeah. and i had to say on the mic basically don't get up off your seat unless you're leaving mm -hmm. Or using the restroom, mm -hmm. you know. So I had to, I had to build this like plastic box basically for karaoke, so that way your spit would stay in with oh. you. Because what I learned during um, during COVID as a voice teacher um, and a choir director is that I didn't realize how much of everyone's saliva that I'm sitting in all the time. Because oh, when yeah. you sing, Disgusting. you have like a 10 foot radius of your saliva that is all around you. So now amplify that by like Just 50 kids in a choir. And that's a lot of spit. So when we started doing karaoke, because you couldn't really DJ because you couldn't have dance music. So yeah. they started trying to bring karaoke back and we'd put those like mic condoms on and then like those sanitize the mics, which is so terrible for them. And then we had I built that like plastic thing. That's that funny that you said like, that, that we couldn't really DJ because like people like, couldn't dance. He would be dance. like play some like energetic music, but not too crazy. And I'm like, what the hell is that? Like, what do I play? So that was good times. I know it sounds <laughs> it really fucked up to say, but I kind of, those times for, I kind of, besides people dying and all the bad things, it was kind of chill. Like, it wasn't, um, I think we, I like that time. It was. The, the quarantine was good for me. and the Because we were so busy. Yeah, so during well, that quarantine, it was like. It's, I was coming out of my, my medical crisis. So I, like, was barely starting to kind of walk around on my own. And so it gave me a time out yeah. to really like get myself better. And I can credit COVID with helping me figure out 
how to get better. Yeah. Because when I got COVID, I had to get off all my medications. And then when I recovered, I figured I feel the same. Like, why am I taking all this nasty crap? So then I started trying more holistic natural approaches. And that's when I started doing the diet stuff. And in three days of eliminating stuff from my diet, my physical strength started returning. I started feeling better. I just started feeling normal. Yeah. And so then I knew. So with the elimination diet, though, you start to introduce stuff back in. So I had lost 80 pounds. I'm going to put some back on because I can eat other <laughs> things now. Before I could just eat, like, honestly, some vegetables and meat. Like that's I it. can't even remember. Someone said, I saw Jimmy on Sunday and he was yelling my name, but I did not know who the hell it was. Our door dashers back. Yeah. Gigi. What's up? GG, take care. It's of not the right address. It is. It has my name on it. Yeah. yeah. You could take it with us on the podcast right here. Come and take we'll the picture with us. Up. This is, do not order food during the podcast. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to be so <laughs> so inviting. Usually they leave that shit at the door and leave. It's then GG. It's not right. It's, it's fine. Um. Okay. So. <laughs> That's so funny. You know what we should do? One of the podcasts is order a whole bunch of different um, DoorDash meals and Let's then have happens. them do something with each other, like dance or something. We'll you know? interview each one. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Remix podcast. R E M X. Okay. <laughs> Oh, my God. Let's get on with this damn show. <laughs> I think he's new at DoorDash. I think so, too. It's fine. He's, that that he's, was cute. Though. It was. It was. We got a cameo appearance from DoorDash. DoorDash, if you want to sponsor the Remix podcast, we'd love that. <laughs> I would love that. If I could have a free pass so I don't have to pay all those damn fees. If anybody wants to sponsor the Remix podcast, let us know. Okay, And please, uh, while we're talking about the podcast, uh, like and subscribe if you can and share it with all your friends and family we got all this chaos happening every single tuesday and lots of fun guests line up yep. lined up lined up talking about talk. great guests we're ready to bring out our first one i think we are all right so first up our first guest today is the one and only ernesto ortiz yay clap, Boo! Yay, clap. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, wow, he's you're not, you're not it's fine. You're not on camera right now. Let's let's go back to the camera. Make sure the mic is on. Hit the switch, Ernie. On the top. On the top. Right there. I know you don't know how to hello, do this. Hello, from the top. hello, hello, hello. It looks like you're like ready to sing us a song. I know. Wait, I don't hold on. How come you guys get that bench and you get to hide everything? We gotta hide and, our, and our look, look at Lady Gaga is like scrunched over. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, Ernie's gonna do a uh, do a little set for us. Uh, so. Oh, am I singing? What's going on? Yes, you're, yeah. gonna, you're gonna sing a whole routine. Well, you know, I um, I do like being here in Tolleson because uh, I I live on the east side now, but I actually grew up here on the west side, um, on 59th Avenue and and McDowell. Y'all familiar? This crowd is lit. Look at this crowd is lit. They're like. <laughs> huh? I was gonna say that's right by my grandma's, 59th and in Cano. Really. Yeah, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. All right, she's cool. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I love it there. I mean, I always, I claim to be a West Sider. I would die a West Sider. This bitch is from Maryville. Oh, can we cuss? Yes. Can, can we? Yeah, okay, we'll sorry. Uh, <laughs> about West Side, but you know what? When, when I was a kid, I loved playing with Barbies. I loved it. Did y'all like playing with Barbies? No, no. Well, I loved it. I loved it. But you know, representation matters, right? You know, you look at those Barbies. And I don't know, those Barbies did not look like the girls from my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know Maryville, it's a pretty rough neighborhood. Yeah, I used to have to modify those Barbies. Yeah. Cholify those Barbies. <laughs> I would sharpie on their eyebrows. Sus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd put brown lip liner around their lips. I'd just fire perm their hair, make it crunchy, like ramen. I love it. I'd give her a black bra with a white wife beater. She's real cute. <laughs> <laughs> real cute. Yeah. I even hooked up her car one time. I hooked it up. She looked real cute. You know she had that Corvette, remember? Yeah. I put some rims on it. Yes, yes. She didn't get to keep it because she took out a payday loan. <laughs> <laughs> didn't make any of the payment. It got repoed. <laughs> it got repoed. Had to change her name from Barbie to La Wera. <laughs> You guys, I'm, I'm distracted because that, 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 uh, Sorry. that, um, 
that DoorDash guy came in and he was like, he uh, came in free balling with a mask. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this, was, boy's, this boy's ready for a show. I was so good. Conf- he, he came in here like he was going to get naked for us or something. I was like, I was what like, the is fuck this? is going on? And then on? he had a big old handlebar mustache. I'm like, oh, hell yeah. This is the man after my heart. <laughs> right. In chanclas, no chonies, he wasn't, and a mustache. He was yes. not shy at all. No, he wasn't. I think he's done this before. <laughs> this ain't the first podcast, <laughs> podcast he's been at. I'm telling you. But yeah, I, love, I love a mustache, though. I mean, I've been trying to grow out this mustache for a while. I think I have a pretty severe one, no? Yeah. 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 I tell my brother, I'm like, do you know, I, I'm trying to, like, have a look, right? I'm trying to have a look. What I'm going after is, like, I want to be the Latino, like, Freddie Mercury, right? right? Yeah, but, you know, he's like, hmm. Uh, Ernie, you look like a gay Mario brother. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, can you imagine if that game was gay? Yeah. I would live for it. I would live for it. You get to jump in random holes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the princess. <laughs> yeah. I jump on the mushroom, it gets bigger. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very afraid to, like, uh, is this the G rated show? No. No. Okay, you good. Do whatever you want. <sighs> I, put, I check, it's not for kids. So. Oh, it's not for kids? Yeah. It's not for kids. Yeah, but they, like I tricks. think they know more than us. Yeah. I think they know more than us. So, Jimmy, are, are you dating? What's going on here? What's, I, I'm throwing it back at you. That's a very loaded question. <laughs> I was. Well, I'm trying to set up my joke. That's why. Just I, say yes or no. <laughs> No. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's hard to date. That's why it's yeah. hard to date. I have a hard time dating. Like I, like I wish, I wish I would uh, uh, find a boy my age. I think that's the problem. I can't. I either date him too old or too young. <laughs> God. Yeah. I dated this one old guy. Oh, he was cute. He's nice, but he was old. He was too old. He was like the kind of old that when you hug him good night, they pee a little. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was nice. He was nice. May he rest in peace. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, he's fine. He's fine. He ran for office. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, and my ex-boyfriend, I think you met him. Uh, my ex-boyfriend, oh my God, I don't know what I was thinking. At that time, I, how old was I? I don't know. I'm 47 years old right now. He was 21 years old. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was fun, but uh, y- you know what that makes me, y'all? <laughs> now that we're all friends. Yeah, <laughs> a gay Mexican cougar. <laughs> That's funny to me. A gay Mexican cougar. How do you even like growl in Spanish? Like, <laughs> Senor, just jumping over the fence, right? <laughs> Pouncing on you. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a manther. A manther. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the other part of the joke is. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, dating. I hate dating. I hate dating because I hate the whole sex thing. I, I hate it so much. I hate it so much. The guys are liars and they're delusional. Not you guys. But uh, <laughs> the, I don't know what it is about us. Like, like s- s- size queens. I don't understand. We all say we're not ones. But I feel like secretly we're all ones. And we want to be like that guy that's showing up packing heat, right? Even if we don't have it. Because right? this is what happened. Boys come to my house and you're going to use a condom if you're going to mess with me. Because I don't want to get pregnant. <laughs> Don't ruin my body, right? <laughs> and, yeah, these guys show up to my house with like these like magnum things, right? Right? These like like just show up with something that fits you, right? Because because <laughs> I turn into the best actor I've ever been when they show up. I'm like, oh, daddy, look at that thing. It's so big. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In reality, it looks like that dancing thing, like uh, like uh, oh, at the car lot. Oh, <laughs> <my God. laughs> And I'm not a jerk. I'm like, no, no, no. I, they, it's okay. It's okay. It fits. We'll, we'll, we'll put it in the dryer. <laughs> and I, how long you want me to keep going? No, you're I can good. go on. No, no, you're good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's my time. <laughs> so right. wait, did you go to Maryville High School? I went to Maryville High. Hey. Hey. What year did you I, I was graduate? supposed to be 95, but you know, <laughs> I'm an artist, so I had to take time. So I was 96. <laughs> <laughs> I, gra- I was I, being creative. I graduated in 05. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's crazy that we were so close to each other this whole time. Maybe I was the young guy that you were 
hooking up with in the there on grinder oh my no grinder. we didn't have grinder there was no there. grinder there was no back grinder then. It, it was, was the like, streets we walked no, the streets it was like uh you went into the, the m for m on freaking oh, yahoo it was, chats it, it was like <laughs> what's a, m for m m for m oh my god what the hell is that it, it, was, it was a confidential connection it was oh, a craig's, oh, craigslist. craigslist no it was this thing called the confidential connection and you dialed this number and all these guys had voicemails and it was like oh. these old daddies that were like yeah i was this young guy and then i i left him this is a true story. I mean, I was at home, living at home, my dad's oh. house. This old, like, I think it was old, this, like, daddy calls the house on the answering machine with the tape, with the little tape, left a nasty-ass message for me. And I was like, did he leave his number? <laughs> he was just nasty. <laughs> my dad was mad. <laughs> I was like, but, Bob, did he leave his number? Yeah. That's oh so that's like the loop used to be. That's yeah, it's like, like the loop, yeah. That's oh. the only thing, that's the oldest thing I remember is the loop. Well, because you weren't alive yet. That's <laughs> 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 You didn't even know you like boys. <laughs> right. I, I got in trouble. Into high school, little freshman little. year. School? Freshman really? year of high school, yeah. No, you know, I knew like in my ballet class that I didn't even know how old I was, but I was a little a little a little peanut and I loved I loved that I loved Jeremy. <laughs> All right, sorry, you took me back. <laughs> so, well, okay, so uh, let's, speaking of taking it back, let's, I'm going to ask you a serious question now. Okay. So can you tell me a little bit about what it was like, what your experience was like growing up in Maryvale, being a gay artist as you, as you An described artist. yourself, yes. right? So, so what was that experience like? Especially yeah. because I'm not, I'm not calling you old, but you're a little older, right? So I know it was rough for me. G can so you speak I, up? Because I can't hurt. No. <laughs> Ernie's no, an hold old on. man. So uh, no, but uh, really though, what what was it? Forty like? seven. Uh, I think it was. You know, I actually I feel very lucky um, in that I grew up doing some type of arts, whatever it was, whether it was dance classes, acting classes, whatever it is. Uh, my mom said uh, she what. Well, the thing was, I tried to follow, do everything that my older brother did, right? And uh, and he played sports. I tried it for a hot second. My mom's like, mm, "You didn't like it, but you did like it when he took dance classes." He so. moved on, and 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 I kept going, right? So um, so I grew up in in like that environment. So I had a good support system there, right? Um, and when I went to Maryville, the reason I was at Maryville, we actually uh, when we first moved here, I moved here when I was ten from Oregon. Um, and my dad's family is from here, and my mom, yeah, yeah, my dad's family is from Avondale, and so we moved to Avondale first, um, and my parents got divorced, and we ended up moving to Maryville, where my, my grandma lived, so I was terrified, right, because I was, I was leaving Avondale Junior High to go to Maryville High School, and I heard about all the things about Maryville High School, right, and I was so scared, but it ended up being that, it ended up being great, uh, uh, you know, I was the gay guy, right? And uh, girls tr seemed to gravitate to gay guys, right? And it was all the hot girls. So all these beautiful girls were around me taking care of me. Uh -huh. uh, uh, and so like, like, the, like the tough guys were like, bro, you're bad, right? Because you'd hang around all these girls. I'm like, yes, I did her hair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like I helped her with her nails. <laughs> yes, that's my outfit, queen, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, those are my yeah. heels, girl. <laughs> and wow. I also have a... a a very good friend, her name is Kelly Kerr, and she's also a stand-up comedian um, that, that went to Maryville. Um, and she was like in my dance class, she was like the big girl uh, with the group, but she's like could dance, she still can dance and sing and the whole mess, a very, very, very talented person. Um, but she took care of all the gabies, right? And you don't mess with her, you didn't mess with her. So if anyone tried to like mess with us, uh, she would swat them down, period. quick. Good. Good. Nope. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess I had an okay experience. I hear these horror stories where people get thrown out of their house. And, yeah. And so on. And I, I remember um, there was one. There wasn't anything, like, really dramatic, but it sticks out in my head where when a, uh, a family member, I think it was an aunt, uh, said, made a comment, and my mom overheard it from the other room, and my mom was in, in the same room quick. Like, she appeared, so, like, like you, you are not going to say this. Period. <laughs> yeah, and... and and that, yes. Yeah, so I think I had a good support system. My dad was was uh, very supportive. Uh, um, yeah, he, you know, you think a Mexican macho dad, but he, like, he loved it. Even like, he could hear your dance recitals, and I don't know, I don't understand why dance recitals have glittery costumes all the time, <laughs> but <laughs> sparkly costumes. But he was all about it. So that's, good. that's you know that's what? Amazing. That's really awesome, especially coming from Maryvale in that area. Um, to have a supportive family to support uh, their their gay child, you know, because when I was gonna when I was ready to come out, I was scared. I was like, I'm either gonna get kicked out or I'm gonna disappoint certain people yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, the I, the 
person I thought that was going to be the most pissed off was the most supportive. Yeah. And we don't know. And, and growing up, our parents know, right? Our family knows and stuff like that. So some of us are blessed for that and some people are not as blessed, but that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Especially yeah. coming from Maryville. And you know, let me tell you, it's like, crazy. when I was a teenager, I was like, not the best, nicest teenager, right? <laughs> I was just like a diva and like my poor parents, that's where uh, they get all the gray hairs, right? Uh, but uh, I remember telling my dad, well, you're, you're just doing this because I'm gay, right? And he's like, okay, we all knew. Uh, <laughs> he's like, we knew you were Calm down, go clean all, your room. Uh, that's nothing new. <laughs> yeah. He's like, we knew since you walked. Like, yes. we know everything. Because he yeah. didn't walk, he saw shade. I saw shade. <laughs> I put a beret, girl. So... <laughs> Um, I'm going to go with the next question. So did you find comedy through your life experiences? How did you find your, your you, way to comedy? You know, I think, um, well, there, there is a story behind that. But my friends have always said I was funny. Uh, um, that doesn't necessarily make you a stand-up comedian, but I think it helped. Um, um, and I've been performing my whole life. But, you know, after a while, you like... It's weird, and uh, Jim, and both of you are artists, um, and I don't know if it happens to you where you like, like, uh, especially if you're like multi, a multidisciplinary uh, artist, right? Where like you find your vibe in one thing, and that's your thing for a while, and then you're like, I'm over it. I got to move on to something else, and so on and so on. Or you just can't do 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 the things anymore. Like uh, when I was younger, I could dance. I could dance. I can't dance right now, right? <laughs> so, I'm not even going to try. Were you a break dancer? <laughs> no. I, oh, I thought I, you were going to... No, no. I jazz, tap, ballet, the whole thingy, right? Oh, right. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, uh, yeah, so I, I can now. So I, it's like you look for another avenue to be creative. And, and, um, and when you work in the arts, you learn how to fundraise. And so I've done that as a career for my day gig for a very long time, like 20 plus years. Um, and I was at a fundraiser one time for when I worked at a food bank. They asked for a representative to, to, to speak at the Tempe Improv. And so I spoke. People laughed. I don't know what I said. Um, but the manager's like, oh, I don't recognize you from the comedy scene. I was like, oh, no, I would never. I, I can't do that. He's like, well, you should. So if you ever want to do it, try it, uh, call me, and I'll put you on stage. It took me a year. Then I took a workshop. I, did, I was, like, scared. All these things. And finally, I called him. He's like, I don't remember this conversation, but sure, you called. You can go on stage. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's been like that since this is my 13th year, I think, as, as a comedian. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah, so, yeah. And I see your flyers up all the time, so you are definitely booked, right? Yeah, booked and, booked bl and blessed. Booked yes. and blessed, booked and blessed, mama. I was just talking to Jimmy. I was like, I didn't realize I had that many shows coming up because, like, sometimes you get lazy. You know, you have to, like... A big part of the show business is the business part, right? Yeah. right so you yeah. have to like do the hustle and make sure you're in front of people and making the calls and laughing at things you wouldn't normally laugh at, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely um, about who you know in the yep. industry. And networking. networking. You could yeah. be not that good at whatever you're trying to sell, right? Yeah. And still get the gig as long as you know the manager or the yeah. promoter or and whatever. I, I think being nice goes a long way. You know, Absolutely. Like, uh, you know, showing up. Showing up, yeah. You know, I, for there was like a point of time when I was doing like a lot of commercial work, like a lot. Like I was just booking the gigs one after another. Nice. But it, what was happening was it was the same casting person, and they were just saying, "Well, Ernesto is easy to work with. He Hit shows up, up on time, and he can like uh, do improv. So let's go." That's yeah. You said you were both on time today. I'm just gonna say, and I and we're not used to that. <laughs> <laughs> I am not used to that. <laughs> and, and, and today I was like, everyone's gonna be late. <laughs> I mean, no shade to other entertainers and people we've had on the not, show. I'm not being any kind of racist, but we're, we're all POC today. So <laughs> he, even, he even texts me. He's like, so what time are you going to show up? I said, oh, like 830. Yeah, he was not I shade, here at 830. I, I Both like our eight. guests were here before my co-host. Well, I, I was in the parking lot and I was like, well, I'm too early. So I sat in the car for a little bit. <laughs> Like, let He's me all, let me drive it's around. It's hot in here. That's funny, though. Drove funny. around a couple of times. Was that Circle K hanging yeah. out? Oh, yeah. yeah. Was I that you guys, too? Because <laughs> he was like, yeah, that was us. That was, Not that Circle been us. K. There's like 13 QTs. Let's, let's do QT. Which is the cruisy one? Which, which is the one with the DoorDash guy? Because uh, Giovanni, do you know? <laughs> no, I'm right. I shouldn't say that. I shouldn't that, talk about that. That was funny though. That DoorDash. I, guy. I feel like it was. I feel like y'all know him. 
No. Is he an actor? No. It felt like Did it. He was a plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It really felt like we knew him, like though, because he came casting. in. Central Casting. I know, right? I called Central Casting, and they <laughs> sent us a door dasher. No, I've never met that No, and that was life. really easy. Like, I could have had him do anything, and he would have done it. He was like a camera. I'm on I was it. like, I'm come over it. here, stand in front. He goes, where's the camera? No, I, I feel like he was trained. He was like in his key lighting, the home mess, right? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's going to be beautiful when you see the playback. Question. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think I have one more question for you. Uh-huh. Uh, what, what is your ultimate goal with comedy? What, where would you like to see your career? You know, I Go. think with anything. I don't know if there's a there's a endpoint or or a north star. I guess if you would. Um, I'm just having fun, and so whatever comes with it, uh, I'll do. Like, uh, and there's I, you know what's the fun thing about comedy is like. This is the only art form where I have access to so many people I wouldn't normally have access to, right? So, like, examples would be, like, uh, like people on TV. Normally, there's a bunch of security around them and all of this stuff that goes on, like a big production. But when they also are stand-up comedians, they're those big stars, but they're in the green room with you with no security. It's just all of you, and you're meeting, like, these big stars, and you're like, oh, hi. Uh, uh, and it's just a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to be... To, Who to would you run, say is the run, yeah. is the biggest celebrity you've been in a show with? I knew with? you were gonna ask that. Of course. Uh, uh, How embarrassing! I'm right here. Uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm starstruck right now. <laughs> no, it was the DoorDash guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like some like I've been. Maybe who I've, was your favorite? Well, I've met some of the people that I admire in stand-up comedy, like uh, Cristela Alonso, um, Paul Rodriguez, um, Jeff Garcia, all these people that I would see on TV as a kid. Mm-hmm. I'm like talking to them, uh, and that's and, cool. and that's pretty yeah, cool. and, and they're like, "Well, okay, when you're in LA, make sure you call me." I'm like, "I get your number." Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's fun, cool. Fun that's stuff. really yeah. cool. The next weekend you're in LA. Yeah, na- I know. And they're like, "Why are you here? <laughs> Why like are the, you here?" Like the manager. I don't remember the conversation, but hello. Well, I've done that. Let me tell you. I like. I used to follow this guy. His name's Jeff Garcia, very funny guy, right? Uh, I would follow his podcast, and I wrote into his podcast, all this stuff. And then I started doing stand-up, and he put me on stage, and he's like, you should come out to L.A. So, you like, would. a week later, I was there, like, almost a month with him. He's like, uh, uh, Time for you to go back yeah, to Phoenix. Yeah, you got to go. <laughs> Here's your bus ticket. <laughs> Get the hell out of my yeah, house. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. He taught me a lot of stuff. So That's great. awesome. So, uh, you, you do have a lot of shows coming up. Uh, where can we see you next? Um, I am a house comic. Um, I know we're way on the we- we're on the west side, um, but I'm a house comic at JP's Comedy Club. I'm normally there every second week of of the month. This week I week I switched stuff around because I had to take a trip to Mexico. Um, and uh, uh, where's that at? Mexico? No, I know where Mexico. Oh, JP, is. JP's, JP's Comedy, comedy Club. Club. I'm sorry, it's in Gilbert. I was I, like, yeah, you know where Mexico he is. Went to, he went to he went to he went to Trevor Brown. Oh. That's okay, why. Okay, that's what happened. Us people uh, that went to Maryville. First of all, you're looking at a Geography B champion right here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I have no words. Uh, yeah. yeah, but I'm a house comic at, at JP's Comedy Club. I'm there every second uh, week of the month. Um, um, Any com- Westside gigs coming up? A West Side gig. I'll be at uh, Stir Crazy Comedy Club September 27th, I believe. Is that I, the one at Westgate? Yeah, okay. at Westgate with uh, Manic Hispanic. He's the host for that one. Okay. Um, Actually, the last, time, the, last time, yeah. the last time I seen you, you were in his show. Yeah. You and Reyes Mamas were oh, both yes. in it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, my brother just saw her like on Saturday, I think. He's like, she's crazy. She's, like, yeah. she's <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Yeah. I love I said, her. I love her. <laughs> Yeah, we had, we had her on the podcast last season. So yeah. I just seen her on Friday. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I, have so, a, I have a project I want to work on with the two of you. So ooh, we'll talk. Are there some we'll talk. like sketches? And- no sketches. Oh, okay. Fully uh, clothed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no DoorDash. Yeah, I'm about to call him. Giovanni, make sure you give me his number. I see. Uh, does, he, <laughs> does he have his name on the. No? <laughs> It usually says Dasher's name or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So, but all of that okay. information you can find out on ErnieRTs.com. I'm also launching. Can I can I plug something? Yeah, please. Plug okay, everything, so everything I, like, you want. I'm an artist, right? And um, since I was a little boy, after my like whatever I was involved with, my mom's like, "You are too hyper." So we're gonna teach you to do something else. So she taught me how to crochet and knit, right? Oh. So I have this like obsession with it. It's what I do all the time to keep my hands busy, right? Okay. So, uh, um, so I make this like like there's there's a little. What I'm trying to do is make all the gay icons in these uh, 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 um, these little dolls that I make. I've made Selena and Tina I've Turner. seen those little dolls. Yeah, yeah. Those are cool. Yeah. So um, so what I'm launching is people are like, I want to learn how to do this. So um, on my Instas and all of my socials and, and my YouTube channel, there'll be tutorials to uh, 
uh, to teach folks how to do it. I didn't necessarily learn the technical way to do it, so you're but gonna your learn way. the Ernesto way to do it. So. That's all right. Hey, yeah. the Ernesto way works. Yes, Gotta do it. Yes. Fuck a tutorial. You could have a class here. Oh, I could. And people could here. come class here in person and oh do that. Gosh. That'd be awesome. Jimmy Davis Music Studios is always available. To always, always available. Oh. I'm always thinking of my friends, so every time something comes up, I'm like, you could use my friend's studio. <laughs> yeah. So, so no, all that information's on the website. Please like it, and then you'll see. And you said it was Ernie Ortiz. Ernie Ortiz dot com. Dot com. Awesome. All right. Well, let's give it up for Ernie Ortiz. Bam, 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 bam. Pepe Le Pew. Thank you so much. He is single, here. ready to mingle. Well, kind of not ready to mingle, but a single. <laughs> single. Yeah, yeah. yeah Unless you have DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna exit. How do I exit? Just, just so he's going to change the slide. All right. and you're gonna Our walk. next guest is going to be the one and only Taylor Renee. Are we playing? Are we going to see? A yeah, we're going to have a music video. What's the song called again, Taylor? Be Your Girl, be your girl, girl. by Taylor Renee. So if you Taylor Renee is in the house what? here at Jimmy Davis Music Studio. Oh, yeah. In beautiful Tallis in Arizona. Yeah. I have to say that every time. I'm I was going to say be beautiful. I'm yeah. obligated as a As beautiful member. as the corner of 59th Avenue and McDowell. Yes. First of all, no, Tallis looks way better than the corner <laughs> of 59th and McDowell. Sorry, Phoenix. Keep up your First streets. of all, they're cleaning them up, okay? Just a little. So did you say you grew up in Maryville too? Mm -hmm. <gasps> did you go to Maryville High School? I almost did, but right before going to high school, I, went, I moved to Colorado. Oh, oh shit. Wow. I was going to say, because okay. my friend here, so that's one, two, three, yeah. almost four. Wow. I would have been C.W. Harris Elementary, Bourbon Junior High, straight okay. into Maryville. Wow. <laughs> I, I went to Estrella Junior High and then Trevor okay. Brown High School. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. We're all Westsiders over here. Westside. That's how. That's how we got. <laughs> that's how be. we roll. That, see, I can't do it. Gotta throw up the dubs. That's why we're gonna eventually have like a Westside Pride kind of situation. We, I, 
I love oh. knowing that about you now. Yes. We, we, you, you're, yeah. We're I, I, here. We're you know, there, there's one thing. Everything that we felt about you has changed now that we know you're from the West Side. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I will say is that, you know, the West Side doesn't get enough credit. There are so many talented artists and, and just performers and people that have come out of the West Side, and it, it's, we, we get like we get shitted on all the time. <laughs> like the West Side is trash. The West Side is this and that. And psh, there's oh, all these oh, awesome people that dirty. came out of here. Yeah. And it is not. The people in, on the West Side are thriving and they're hardworking people. And we are doing our thing over here on the West Side. And truthfully, the Southwest Valley. Here I go with my political plug now. But the Southwest go. Valley is <laughs> the fastest growing region in the entire state, and it is thriving right now. So you want to live on the West Side. Right. You want to live in Tolleson, Goodyear, Avondale, Buckeye, Surprise. We'll leave Glendale out. <laughs> but no, I'm <laughs> I mean, just kidding. Surprise Glendale. gets a little far. Yeah, Surprise is far. But, but. Uh, so Surprise has some amazing things going, especially yeah. with the arts. They have just great arts and culture going on in in, in Surprise. But anyway. All right, we're here to talk about you, Taylor Renee. Um, thank you for coming on the podcast. I'm really excited oh, to finally have you here. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about what made you want to become a musician, a singer. That's a <laughs> that's a loaded question. It is. It's meant to be. <laughs> um. So everyone knows me as a dancer and a choreographer. I pretty much was dancing and choreographing for everyone in the valley. And my moment just came where I was like, hmm. One, I wanted to step to the forefront. And so um, not many people know, but my first ever drag name was Kadiva Minor. And Felicia Minor was my drag mom. But you know, just performing as a new femme AFAB drag queen didn't like fulfill me either. Uh -huh. I started to say, I have a voice in there. I wanted to explore that. And um, I started out rapping because I had a lot to say. All my songs had a million words in them. And you should only have five nowadays. You only need five words in a song. Uh, <laughs> I believe um, that. You know, honestly, yeah. <laughs> and then I just pushed myself as well. Just I've talked to you so many times about, you know, singing vocally and and being trained and not just flying by the seat of my pants. And so I've been very lucky because my rapping became the platform that allowed me to grow to where I'm, I'm at today. It's crazy. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So let's circle back a little bit with uh, being an AFAB queen, right? Or a femme queen, I think is another yep. term for yep. it, right? So that is sometimes not that accepted. So what, 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 has, what has that experience been like for you? I mean, I'm considered one of the pioneers for sure. <laughs> um, so we all know that drag is for everyone now, but we haven't always known that. And so I was going to say, I feel like that's been um, a lot more recent. Mm -hmm. And when I say recent, probably like after quarantine, because even right. before that, it was very difficult for not, not only um, AFAB, right? Mm -hmm. But male, all like male entertainers that would want to come out and perform as well. Or vocalists you know? in general. Vocalists in general as too. well. I think one of our goals, me and Jimmy had from the get go, was to get as many people on stage at the drag shows that could sing live. And not in a shady way, but kind of like give them a platform to be able to come out and perform. Yeah. It's hard. It's really hard. So being AFAB, you know, assigned female at birth, it means that people look at me crazy when I say I'm a drag queen. And that's because typically everyone knows that drag queens are, you know, males that impersonate women and they do such a great job. But then the comparison started to happen. Oh, well, I have to tuck and, and AFAB women don't or cisgendered women don't or I have to do this, but they don't. And I was never like that. I was like, you might tuck, but I do some things too that leave me with pain down there at the <laughs> end of the night. <laughs> I wear 301 lashes. I cinch. I was doing, you know, if I'm a size 12, cinching myself to a size 8 to, you know, be able to perform and working on my breathing and all that. So I, true and true, for the last easily 12 years, have considered myself a drag queen. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. Okay. I will say that, like, for me, you know, one of my experiences, I was told very often, I was turned away and said, well, you know, you're really talented. Why don't you do drag? 
Mm-hmm. And then and then you know and then we'll we'll put you in. Just right. do drag. Right. Why? <laughs> so we Same. said fuck it. We're gonna just make our own shows. Same. Which I think you all you have a lot of shows that you produce as well, right? Did did that, that come are... from that? From not being? I mean, it's hard to say that with you because, yeah. um, from what it's, what I if, if remembered you as you would always get booked a lot in a lot of the shows anyways, right? Mm-hmm. But other people are not as blessed, right? A lot of other right. people struggle to get into those kind of shows that they wish right. that that we, we did. You know, I call myself an OG, and I will. I am someone that will kick doors down to produce my own shows if that's what I need to do for myself, just like you guys. That's why we you know, can relate so well. But I went through the same thing. So here I am doing drag. I'm booked all the time. Book, 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 book. Oh, but wait, I'm pursuing my own music. Uh. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll book you if you want to lip sync. We'll book you if you want to do drag. Um, but I just kept being persistent because now all the people that are doing it now have so many of us to thank for paving the way to mm-hmm. be able to do drag and sing live. Mm-hmm. I, <laughs> yeah, I, I've I never a, seen so many. I, I have a friend who I won't I won't say their name because I don't want to I don't want to ruffle any feathers for people who do book them. But they are they're an AFAB queen and they are a phenomenal vocalist. And when they started doing drag, they were like, oh well, I I, I can't sing because. They, they don't want me to. And they're saying, no, that's not drag. That's not drag. Well, I don't know who made them the police of the dra- of drag. Stop but policing drag. Yeah, I, 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 literally, <laughs> I literally told them, um, and no, you should sing because that's, what gonna, that's what's going to make you stand out of the, of the, of the crowd, mm-hmm. right? And there's a lot, especially with like the rise of RuPaul's Drag Race and it becoming so mainstream, there's a oversaturation of drag performers. So mm-hmm. you want to be able to stand out. Right. And if you have a gift like that, if you have a gift uh, as a singer or a dancer, right. use that. Because so many, right. so many don't. <laughs> in, in my shows, I book drag kings, I book drag queens, I book live singers, I book dancers, you know, all of what we try to do mm-hmm. in our aesthetic mm-hmm. is valid to me. Yeah, I, th- I, we, we, I think the three of us align on that, right? We try mm-hmm. to create a space for everybody, and, yeah. and that's important. That's important. So let's circle back to your music a little bit. What's your creative process like? So I have a weird one, and uh, <laughs> I don't know if it's normal or not, <laughs> but so say right now. Right now, there's a song. It's brewing in me, and I hear it in the shower. I hear it when I'm asleep. If it happens when I'm asleep, I will wake up and write it down, <laughs> and then wake up and try to remember the melody. Or I will get up out of bed, go into the closet with my phone, and do the melody so that Not I will Not the remember. closet. <laughs> well, because my partner's sleeping, you know, I try to be yeah. considerate. Yeah. No, I got it. Um, partner but, wakes up like, what are what you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> You're just in there dancing and shit. <laughs> so it starts there, you know, just something brewing within me that needs to come out. And then when it's ready, it pours out like, crazy I'm just right I'm writing and then I'm scribbling it out and then I'm writing and then I'll rewrite it in my phone so that I could take it to the Mm -hmm. studio to record it that's awesome that's awesome um so who do you draw inspiration from what who are your favorite artists I have a lot um I love Anita Baker um I've actually been so my family does a talent show for Christmas every year that's really cool Uh so I'm guessing you have a lot of in, um, performers in your family in order to do that. It's not even that. It's just we've we adopted the the talent of lip syncing for like the adults that wanted to, and then kids will report their or show off their report card, or they'll play their flute thing That's cute. that they learned in the you know showcase or recital at their school. And so we've been doing that since I was five. Wow. And so when I was five, I lip synced Anita Baker. <laughs> and then when I was eight, like it just kept kept going and kept going until I developed my dance talent and then I would do dance talents at Christmas. So I've been a huge Anita Baker fan for a very long time. <laughs> okay. um, but I also love Beyonce currently. Uh, there's a lot of great artists out. Billie Eilish is a huge favorite. Just anything that I can sing and feel good about, mm-hmm. I love. Yeah, you hear that, Jimmy? What? Beyonce. I Me and him. Know. You do you watch us sometimes? He he talks about how Beyonce's not all that or whatever Beyonce he says. Beyonce is a great performer. She's the queen. She's overrated. 
she is she's the not, queen. I'm sorry, she's not a Whitney. She's not a Mariah. She's good. She's good. I wouldn't even she say she's a Kelly or a Christina. She absolutely be a Whitney. She's not a Mariah by way of the notes that she yeah, doesn't hit. Yeah, for sure. Not very but many she people is are. a musical genius, and we got to give her her flowers. Yes. Oh. I'm, I, I would never, I would never, <laughs> ever, ever, ever take anything away from Beyonce. Yeah. Beyonce is an amazing performer. She is. She's, she's so well-rounded. Yeah. I just think sometimes people try to put her on like a Whitney pedestal, and I'm sorry, I will yeah. die on I, that. I, but I feel like that about a lot of artists, that when people try to put – a particular artist way, way, way up there, and then it kind of like makes you lose interest because you're like, eh. But do we all have to be Whitney's? And you don't. No, no, you, you don't. don't. You know, there's you so m- there's so much room for people for sure. to perform, and there and is, and there's space for everyone, yeah. right? But a yeah. lot of people are like, it's like this lane, and that's mm-hmm. it. Like that's right. and that's right. just it's, it's silly. It's stupid to me. So. I'm also a huge Taylor Swift fan. Um, but I, I just truly I think that, that she's a musical <laughs> genius. I know people don't. I didn't think that you loved Taylor Swift. I that's know, cool. that's good to know. Fun fact. But she, if you watch her documentaries, if you watch her, her biography, she's really, really passionate. Mm-hmm. And you just can't take that away from people. Yeah. I support that. Yeah. I, I will definitely say that I have a lot of respect for Taylor Swift, mm-hmm. uh, especially now that she's becoming more politically engaged. Right. Um, you know, she's like, we're not doing this shit again. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm going to use my platform. And Beyonce, too, the same. Right, right. You know, like, they're, they're, they're doing the right thing right now, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's, it's, it's really awesome to see. Um, all right. So uh, just another question. What is, uh, what would you say is your favorite performance of all time? For, of mine or someone else? Yours. Of yours. It's going to have to be Tucson. I have two. Okay. I have two. It's going to have to be Tucson Pride. Um, in 2018, it was a beautiful experience. I got to headline Tucson Pride to a sold out crowd, treated like a star. You know, that mm. doesn't get to happen to us that often. And I had a writer, all those things. And then I was also the nominated emerging artist for Dinah Shore. Oh. And so they. I, I was in Blythe at the time, so I, they covered my gas, they paid for my hotel, they gave me f- VIP everything, everywhere, and I performed in front of 15,000 women. Like, nice. Wow. It was phenomenal. That's on, beautiful. On the grand stage. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Yes, it's everywhere. That's you can amazing. look it up. Yeah. So there's receipts. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you have a lot of receipts because you have a lot of titles, so let's list some of those. I was going to say, <laughs> she's won so many pageants as well Let, let's tell us some uh, of the ones you have one that you uh, can remember you probably have like 13 15 thousand <laughs> titles at this point <laughs> i'm former us of a diva arizona diva here um phoenix eoi femme i was nationally the <laughs> title holder for gay united states so that's that was a huge win because and i want to talk about that for a second um have you ever been like down in the dumps and you don't really know what you're doing, but someone says, you should do this. Okay. And you put all the effort into doing it, and you go, and you're successful, like, the first time, and then you're, like, catapulted into reigning. So Gay United States was a big turning point for me. Um, I'm currently Miss Wallapai Pride. I stepped out in October, October 19th, and I've been Miss Renaissance, newcomer, National Newcomer Femme, West Coast Newcomer Femme. <laughs> Will you be running? Boycott. Yeah. (laughs) Will you be running again this year in any of the pride prelims? No, not this year. I'm taking time off to just really focus on my package for Queen. Nice. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows, like, the the pageant hill I want to die on is Queen. Period. Mm -hmm. Tell Tell me about that pageant. I don't know what that pageant is, so. Uh, Queen International or Queen National Pageantry Systems. It's not international. Queen National Pageantry Systems. Um, I competed last year. It's in New Orleans. Okay. And um, the system is just really like royal. They put you on a pedestal and you just reign regally. Like you get to do a ton of national walks. Prize package is eight thousand dollars plus 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 plus. Mm-hmm. Um, I competed last year. I played second alternate to Kennedy Davenport as a femme. So that was, that was. That's huge. like a huge deal, mm-hmm. for sure. Every single contestant was RuPaul's Drag Race worthy, like mm-hmm. high up on the food chain, or you know. That's very well raining known. right now, right, Kennedy? Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. If I were to be successful, Kennedy, who is an amazing person and 
my Davenport auntie would be who would crown me if I'm successful. That is sickening. <laughs> I, I mean, just a question that popped in my head. So I, I'm going to be 100% honest. I am not. <laughs> he doesn't know who Kennedy Davenport is. I don't. And I'm not a drag person. Like, I, I don't follow, like, the pageant systems. I don't watch We've had RuPaul. Race. We have had RuPaul entertainers interviewed on the show, and he's like, I don't know. I was like, well, look it up, hurry up, because she's going to be on the show. I, I just, We've had, I, we had a lot of different RuPaul girls, because uh, I've worked with a lot of them. So, Yeah, I just, I, it's just, it's not my thing. Whatever, you know, I yeah. teach their own. Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not dissing the art form. I think it's amazing. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Drag, I give you when, shit later. But when, when, <laughs> dra when, drag, when drag is done well, it is amazing. Yeah. There's all kinds of different drag, yeah. for sure. But Kennedy's no. one of the, she does like the old drag, the really... Polished, she's very big. Polished. Yeah. Tech, she's from yeah. Texas. Oh, okay. Huge that. dancers. She's, she's amazing. She was what? on. Kicks well, behind your head. So, or, so I have yeah. a I have a follow up question to that. So my question was: Has have has there been a femme queen or a fab queen on RuPaul's Drag Race? No. No. Do they accept them? Not yet. Not yet. RuPaul, we hope. <laughs> you fracking motherfucker. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean that's Not a yet. that's a very good conversation, right? Like. Uh, RuPaul from the beginning has always said that the, the people that are going to be on his show are going to be uh, males that transform into female drag, right? He's always said that before, but if you've noticed, the last couple of years, he doesn't say that anymore, and he is accepting a oh, little... Times are changing. Yeah, he's, he's had uh, multiple trans right. so individuals on the show. Right. There's okay, trans so individuals, and he has brought AFAB or FEM or cisgendered women onto the judges panel. So we are making headway, I okay. do believe that. But I also wanna play devil's advocate, and I'm sorry, don't shoot me, but I do think that RuPaul needs to see femme or AFAB entities rising to the exact same level of mm -hmm. the current RuPaul girls. And until we do that, he's probably not gonna feel comfortable, and I don't doubt, I don't blame him for that. How do you feel, I mean, truly deep, in, deep down inside, how do you feel about something like RuPaul's Drag Race that that everybody looks up to so highly, right? How do you feel about that, that they don't really accept kind of the entertainment that you provide? Like, how does that make you feel? It makes me sad, but it also makes me want to work harder. You know, so I am someone who tries to wear all the pairs of tights and tries to have in pageantry pads and do, you know, all the A plus one plus one plus two, all the equ equation stuff to be considered on the level yeah. mm -hmm. in pageantry, but it, it does make me sad. And I feel like even with my quest for queen, you know, I'm gonna run this year right after Kennedy Davenport, who is right now in a residency in Las Vegas, who is right now on RuPaul's Drag Race. And, you know, are they gonna accept me with my talent? Yeah. Because I have the talent to win, but do I have the same notoriety being that she's allowed to be a RuPaul's girl and I'm not. No, but I also have another area or lane of notoriety with my music that mm -hmm. maybe she doesn't have. So yeah, hopefully that's that, true. that, that that's could be true. taken does into that consideration. Feel kinda, sorry. Does that feel kind of unfair when girls like from that were on RuPaul's Drag Race or on a big TV show or reality show compete in a pageant? Do you feel like that's not fair because they already put them on a higher pedestal than maybe you or any other contestants? Do you feel like they shouldn't be running? No, 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 no. I, I feel like I might have used to have felt that mm -hmm. it was, wasn't was fair when I was still kind of coming up through the ranks, but I'm a pretty heavy-hitting yeah, yeah. contender, so I don't, I don't think that way anymore. I, I mean, I would feel like it's not fair because I would feel like it would be really hard for the judges to not be biased in their judging, you know? Uh, a promoter might want that RuPaul girl to represent their title because it's going to put their title on a different right. level. Right. Like, look at Kennedy, um, uh, drag con, she wore her crown and and she was representing and put that put that on a different level. You know what I mean? Right. For sure. And she's on Kennedy, uh, Canada versus the world, mm -hmm. and like you said, she's on uh, Las Vegas Live and all the things <laughs> that she's doing now. So she does a lot of shit right. that that. That pageant now is getting a lot of fame for. I'll never be able to touch that. And until RuPaul changes his mind, I'll never <laughs> be able to touch that. But I have other things that I am able to touch. Yes. That makes me 
just as much of a contender. For sure. Because so. Kennedy can't walk around and sing, right? Right. <laughs> Let alone dance and sing, because I'd be seeing Taylor Renee dancing all over the place. <laughs> I'm a girl. That's I'm, hard, too. I'm yeah. tired watching you. Every time, I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. I'm going to take a nap for you. <laughs> production. <laughs> Come on, production. Yeah, yeah. I, I will say that, you know, you, you've, you've clearly, you know, been knocking down doors for a long time, and I think you're going to keep doing that. So I, th- I think you're going you're gonna to kill it at this pageant. I know you will. I know you're going you're gonna to represent Arizona well, because yeah. when you do stuff, you, you go all in. You know, it, it's very apparent. I, I, you know, I watched uh, videos from your Rainbow Fest performance mm-hmm. that comes into my head, and you, you can't, you can't fake that. You work your ass off right. when you when you do stuff, and and hard work pays off. So. And if I could just shout out my dancers, like they're amazing. They do meet me at my house. We do train and practice in the garage sometimes. In well, the if you heat. ever need an AC place, well, now at I Jeremy know. Davis Music <laughs> Studios is always available for rent. <laughs> I walked in, and I was like. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You know, that happens a lot. People come in, especially with the podcast, because we've been bringing like way different people into my studio space, yeah. right? They're like, you've been sleeping on this. We didn't know you had this space. Like, Or oh, they wow. tell them like, you really do have a studio? Like, duh, it's not walking around just talking shit. I clearly have a studio. You're here. You're here right now. We are here. Um, Pinch me. I feel it. I'll be <laughs> reaching out. Because it's not far. It's only 14 minutes. From my house. Yeah, oh, so yeah. we're lit- we are f- we are about fifteen minutes from Boycott Bar. There That's you go. Yeah. It's all freeway. It's <laughs> all freeway. So so anyway, um, is there is there anything in particular you want to plug that you have coming up? Um, I'm super excited because this weekend. Well, I have three things to announce. This Saturday, I will be at the Deuce performing for Phoenix Magazine's Best of Valley event. I was nominated Performing Artist of the Year oh. for 2024. And then September, weekend of September 21st, I'll be headlining uh, New Mexico, Silver City, Silver City, New Mexico Pride. Cool. And then the weekend after that, I'll be in Florida for Cape. We're going to bring on the manager in. (laughs) I know. It's it's a lot. But they're like really exciting things, making me travel. And I love to travel. So. Yeah. I love it. Well, Give um, your social media handles and all that so people could find all those. Pretty much everywhere, Taylor Slay Renee. Uh, T-A-Y-L-O-R-S-L-A-Y Slay Renee as for streaming music, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all of these. Awesome, awesome. Awesome. And then I think you have a brunch this weekend? Or is it every week? How, how, when is the brunches? Uh, thank you. Sorry. Did you forget? Almost. It wasn't this. It was just this past weekend oh. for my birthday. It was my birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thank you. 21? Now, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 35 forever. 35 oh. forever. I like that one. And then, but it's every second Sunday, so we won't go again until the second Sunday. And that's September. over at the Clarendon Hotel, right? The Clarendon Hotel. We need to, uh, they changed that restaurant so many times, so we need to go and try out their new food because me and Jimmy are usually there all the time in the summer. You Please know what? come to my brunch. Be my special guest. Okay. And yeah, for sure. We will, you can even swim after the brunch. We make it a whole Sunday fun day thing, but the food is amazing. The steak and eggs is really good. Oh, awesome. yeah. I, I was there a couple of weeks ago. I, I, I don't know why I was there. Why was I there? It doesn't matter why I was there. <laughs> I remember, <laughs> but I'm not going to say it out loud. We, I w- we, um, oh, that's why I was there. Him. Anyway, um, any. Uh, what did you do? Not me. I didn't do anything, but uh, <laughs> I ate at the restaurant and I There's swam. A story there. So you did try out the restaurant. And there? I got stood up. Did you try out that restaurant? Yes. I well, I ordered. I ordered something simple because I was at the pool. So okay. I love the pool at the Clarendon. Yeah. I do. And their jacuzzi yeah. is the largest jacuzzi, jacuzzi in the state of Arizona, and it's like a rectangle instead of a circle, so you're not on top of each other. <laughs> It's like yeah. lots of space. And so you could be like, get away from me. Go over there. It's out of the sun. So yes. the way that the building sits, it's nice. the jacuzzi is always. And they have the nice. cannabis friendly rooms. Mm-hmm. And yeah, mm-hmm. I, sh- I should work it's there remodeled. sometimes. Oh, wait, I do. <laughs> 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 I usually host their New Year's party and a few they other be, things. They be changing here. shit, though, on us so much. Yeah, they do. It's oh, my gosh. Well, anyway, anyway, so every, <laughs> every other Sunday? Every second Sunday. Every second, Every second Sunday. Sunday. Okay, second awesome. Sunday. I'll definitely come out and check out one of mm-hmm. your brunches. I do yeah. have Sundays free now. Yay. I needed to make that executive decision for myself to have Sundays off so I, I could mean, have a day off. This, I have Sundays free now, too. Oh, period. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Well, um, 
Yep. So be sure to follow Taylor Renee and check yes, them please. out. They're always performing. They're always oh. doing amazing things all around the valley. They got their House of Renee going on and live House singing and all kinds of stuff. So That's yeah. right. You know, I'm really grateful for the House of Renee. They are not only my kids, but like my friends, you know, mm-hmm. and to see them and to, to get to support them and all the amazing stuff that they're getting to do. It just makes me super proud. It really That's is awesome. amazing to, to be the head of a house, right? Mm-hmm. Like with my house of Davis, I feel the same way. Like it's just amazing to see them grow as artists and, and to be able to kind of like you kind of cultivate that, yeah. right? You plant those seeds, you yep. water them, and then and then they blossom. And, and I'm they that grow. mom. I'm like, you just did what? Yeah. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Yeah. Let me post on Facebook right now. Period. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes <laughs> they, they, you know, like any kid, they leave the house and they think they're too big for their britches, but whatever. You still support them you from afar. You let them afar. grow. Even though you might want to stab them sometimes. You <laughs> just feel <laughs> that. <laughs> you let them do what they need to do. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, well, Taylor Renee, thank you so much for coming on. We, yeah. we appreciate you coming down to Tolleson and you know, coming to the studio. And good luck in everything you do. And we'll be supporting thank you, you uh, thank through you. your queen pageant. Yes. Rain. You'll see it. Period. You're going to get real heavy with it, so you'll see it. Thank awesome. you for having me. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming. <laughs> All right. Let's give it up for Taylor Renee. <laughs> Be sure to bam, follow bam, her bam. on all the social media stuff. <sighs> my whole leg fell asleep right now. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm thinking about my burrito. Trying to, trying to bring it back to life. Yeah, I'm thinking about my... Pizza. No, I ended up getting a burrito because the pizza was like 40 bucks. Yeah. For two pizzas, I was like, ah. They have a six. Domino's has a six ninety nine carry out only special right now. But ask me if the gluten free pizza is on that special. Absolutely not. A gluten free pizza from it's anywhere. It's like an extra like, fifteen. It's bucks. like twenty dollars for a gluten free pizza, and they're never that good. So it's just horrible. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. That's stupid. No, the last time, shit. the last time we I got one. Where did we get it from? It was really good. Domino's. Was it Domino's? Mm-hmm. Domino's has the best gluten-free pizza, to be honest with you. And what's funny is I hate Domino's. Like, I do not like, I didn't, I would not eat their pizza. Their regular pizza, it was so gross to me. It tastes like the box that comes in. <laughs> um, it's so nasty. But their gluten-free pizza is actually exceptional. So my favorite pizza when I could eat regular pizza was Peter Piper pizza. I'm sorry. I, sorry still, I still crave that sometimes. Their lunchtime buffet is where it's at. I dream of it. I dream of it. <laughs> My cousin actually posted a picture of her and her son. They went on like a little mom son date or whatever, and they were at Peter Piper. And I could taste the pizza through the picture. Oh I was so sad. <laughs> I'm like, I want it. So my family loves Peter Piper. So they always do like birthday parties and stuff. And I just don't go. Because Peter, Peter Piper has. It. Peter, well, Peter Piper has zero gluten free options. Even their salads are all glutinous. So I can't even, can't have nothing at Peter Piper. The broccoli crust? No. Okay. With broccoli. I, I mean, I've done it with the cauliflower, but not with broccoli. I mean, I guess it would be the kind of the same, same process. Hmm. I'll have to try that. I'll have to try that. I love broccoli. Uh-huh. Am I on? Wait, what? Air? I think it's yeah, yeah, Insta. Yeah. We're on live. Are we on air? So, oh, yeah, we're still on air. Yo, we can keep going all night. It don't matter. It don't matter. We went for two and a half hours last week. And I know, one of our we guests for canceled. Long but we had a lot to say because there was the whole summer break, you know. And I had to We like, had a lot to say. I had to say some stuff about Flagstaff Pride and. <laughs> Just go back to. Cancel culture and all that. So, yeah. I just. It was I a do, good time. I just can't deal with that crap. So be sure to check out last week's episode. Um, yeah. Anyway. Did okay. you edit it? You, you took some stuff out? I took out, I told the same story twice, so I took that out, and then I adjusted the sound a little bit yeah. because we were having some sound trouble last week. It's really hard because we did a Zoom, one of the interviews through Zoom, right? So mm-hmm. we're set up like this, so it sounded fine in yeah. the room, but then when we got there, our mics, well, especially mine, your mic was loud, but my mic was like really quiet, and then they're like Zoom mics because they're controlling their own sound. I have no control over their sound, so that was all loud. So it was, it was a hot mess, but I used some AI tools and <laughs> <laughs> made it at least a little bit better. Um, anyway, so, so yeah, what do you have coming up this coming week? This coming up week, I will be hanging out at the Cash on Friday. Okay. They have like a banda that's going to be there. And so the, the, my go-go dancing companies, they're going to be dancing and I'm going to be there for a little bit. Um, and that's pretty much it. Just promoting, getting stuff ready for our Labor Day Stallions. weekend. Yeah. Getting ready for our weekend, Labor Day weekend. I have 
Miss Fierce Delicious from RuPaul's Drag Race versus the world. Or wait, or is it Canada versus the world? There's so many different RuPaul's Drag Race, but RuPaul's Drag Race, Canada versus the world with Miss Fierce Delicious. She's going to be here on Friday, August 30th, and then the 31st is my circuit party, and then the September 1st is our pool party. You know, there are so many RuPaul's Drag Race oh shows. Oh, my God. So why it's don't so they have a RuPaul's Drag Race race race? Waste. Drag race. I'm fucking Elmer Fett over here. Drag Race Femme Edition. Come on, RuPaul. That's a great. I mean, it wouldn't be it it, it wouldn't be hard, right, to do not only you'd get some bad or even drag it. kings. Like, yeah, it wouldn't be hard to put it together. Um, There's no drag kings either. The closest that you could get is um, Dragula. Just make her own. You know what? If Dragula could do that shit on YouTube, so can we. And, they start, and our production value would be better because they my started <laughs> season one of Dragula can't hold a fucking candle to the remix podcast. <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> we're doing it. We're announcing it right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. We got our host. We got this ready to go. We got this. We're going to do a femme edition from Tallis in Arizona. From Tallis in Arizona. Beautiful <laughs> Tallis in Arizona. That would be fun, actually. We should. I mean, to do like I've, a little. I've actually really thought about doing like a singing competition that way. It would just get a little expensive with the rights. That's why I'm kind of like, oh, with the music rights, because that crap adds up real fast. Real we fast. got flagged last week for my my karaoke. Mrs. Jones. Don't sing it. They're gonna charge <laughs> us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to pay. For, well, it, it it was fine because that YouTube the creator allows YouTube use, but I'm still gonna just pay for the rights so we don't get taken down eventually. For sure. So. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much my week, my this coming up weekend, you know, just yeah. getting things ready for Labor Day weekend. Okay. Um, so this week I am at Boycott on Wednesday for karaoke. I will be at Tap 2 on Friday for karaoke, and I will be at Casa de Plata on Saturday, which is every week, right? Um, and uh, I'm really excited because the following week I'm starting a new gig. That's over what I was going to ask you. you yeah, start over this at week. Stinger's Bar, which is in Glendale. If you've been to Great Scape, it's right, like right next door to it. Um, they have new owners and stuff. I'm really excited about some of the opportunities that are going to be happening over there. But I'll be there on Thursdays from 9 to 1. Nice. So that's going to be fun. Um, and then uh, I was going to say something else that I forgot. So boycott. Oh, oh, and then at Casa de Plata, not this Saturday, but the following Saturday, one of our regulars, his name is Jersey. He's moving away. Jersey's my birthday. He twin. is. Mm -hmm. He has Jersey's moving away. So you've covered for me. So Jersey is this uh, this man. He's in his 70s. Just an amazing human. Like he's so awesome. Uh, but his son lives in Virginia, and so his wife is like, "We gotta move over there." So that's they're crazy. He's a but great, great singer. He is an amazing singer. So the funny that like the cool story about Jersey is that Jersey. Um, used to live like by this recording studio or whatever, like in New York or whatever. So he'd go, like he'd be there all the time. Like he spent all his his free time there. And they'd always be like, hey, we need a backup singer. We need a backup singer or whatever. So this fool gets royalty checks. Yeah. He doesn't even know what for. He's like, no, I just get this. It's not that much, but it's still, it's kind of cool. He's like, I don't know what song it's for. I sang on so many damn right. songs. <laughs> like I sang with all these groups. Like, they just needed a backup singer. And he's like, I'm here, I'll do it. You know, he's, he's amazing. He does some of the, like, the crooner stuff really well. He does. I'm going to have to come to just, that. He, yeah. So he's really it's, nice. Yeah. Guy. Oh, he's such an, he's such an awesome guy. He loves, because we're birthday twins. He loves to buy me tequila shots. He's all, come over here. We got to take a shot. And then he tells me, you fucking better sparkle on, on his last day. <laughs> he's like, don't be coming in this bullshit. You fucking better sparkle. Right. And I'm like, okay, Jersey. Because a lot of times. Casa de Plata is kind of my start for my Saturday night, so I'll go there, and then if I have a gig in the neighborhood, I'm usually like really over the top <laughs> at how I'm. I wouldn't normally dress like that on a in a West Side karaoke gig or a karaoke gig in general. But so uh, they get to see me a lot, very very draggy. We'll go with that, right? Even though I don't call it that, I call it queer fashion, not drag fashion. Um, but anyway, so anyhow, so he's like, he, he's like really adamant about I better sparkle. And then he says, I'm going to really look hard because I'm going to find somebody just like you over there. And I'm like, good luck. I'm one of a kind. So <laughs> yeah, but he's anyway, a great he's, guy, so. he's an amazing man. And, and we're really going to miss him over at Casa de Pata. And it's also Bo's birthday. who's another one of our regulars. Um, Bo comes to all of our West Side nights. So it'll be fun. No, and that place has really good food. They do. Very good entertainment. Which is Jimmy. 
and the yeah. karaoke. So if you don't have nothing to do or you just don't want to be at a crazy club or bar. I have to say that I, I would I would venture to say that I am the only karaoke host in the entire state of Arizona oh. that can pull up. First of all, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a classically trained vocalist. <laughs> I'm an amazing singer and not to toot my own horn. You heard me last week. And if you haven't, go watch my Jimmy Oki segment from last week. I will show you that I can sing. But I think I'm one of the only ones that can actually pull off doing a monologue. I always start my show, I sing a song, and then I do a monologue. Like, I just talk, and I talk shit, and, like, I engage the audience. And not, I don't, there's not very many karaoke hosts. That there, I mean, that. there's some that try where you're kind of like, oh, shut up, let's just do karaoke. <laughs> you know what I mean? They probably think that, too, but it's okay. <laughs> I, I'm just going to say, I could talk for hours, clearly. Yes. <laughs> we talked yes, for yes, two yes, and yes. a half last week. Um, so, anyway, so... Um, yeah, yeah. There's lots of stuff coming up, and yep. it's, who's know. our guest next week? Let me see. Oh, so next week you have a spreadsheet right here. Get your magnifying glass because I know you're old and you can't see. No, um, if you see our papers, his is zoomed in bigger no. than mine. Look, mine's is little. He's a liar. So is mine. This is the same <laughs> size. It is exactly the same. No, but next week we're gonna have um, Justin Maynard is confirmed for next week. Uh, we had to move some things around in our schedule, so uh, he'll be here. He has a brand new uh, single that's out. It's called Something's Got to Give. It's out already. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's out already. Um, so uh, Doctor Justin Maynard, student. I get so lost sometimes. Like someone will pull like they're gonna do a song coming soon and then like a couple hours later it's like out i'm like wait what <laughs> fuck no. you just said it was coming out i didn't think it was gonna be in two hours yeah his sound is very like 80s very throwback it's, it's pretty cool it's he's a, cool a great song. singer as he well is, he's an amazing musician like he plays uh he plays the piano he was so he was in my musical that we did and he yeah. would just be sitting around here messing around with crap he'd be because he actually played in the musical he played his song live on the piano so i mean just amazing on the keys he picked up the, the guitar one day and he's like, I kind of play this fool was like full on playing the guitar. And then he, I know he plays sax and he just plays a bunch of instruments and he's a good singer too. Um, and he's a future doctor. So, I mean, there's that. So he'll Damn, be on a here. singer. Uh, he just, he actually just passed his exam that he was really concerned about. Um, so now he's out there in the streets <laughs> doing his rotations. So nice, he's nice. on his first rotation right now. So I'm really proud of him. So it'll be cool to have him here. And then we might have, I can't confirm, I'm not going to say the name, but we might have a spiritual leader here next week to oh, talk yes. a little bit about. Uh, hopefully, I'm, I'm trying to get that confirmed. We will definitely have him. Um, That's gonna I'm be just awesome. going to say, his name is Father David. Um, so I don't know if, he's ho on, he's hopefully a, he will. I found him on TikTok. Hopefully we'll have him here one. next week. If not, we will have him here very, very soon. Um, just because we had to move some things around, I'm trying to land him for next week. But he is a retired uh, priest, and his just his perspective just I, he really just drew me in with this one video it, w it was about uh being a uh, transgender and it talked about how the genesis story says god created uh men and women in his Im in, in in his image right so obviously they like his his point was that so god doesn't have a gender he's non-binary yeah. right so and then he goes in deeper about that and then he has some other videos that are just so profound okay. like his perspective was it just blew me away, like on these little TikTok videos. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I reached out to him and he's like, I would love to do. I, I literally told him my whole life story. Jimmy like literally texted me and was like, oh, I messaged him. He might not. Who knows? And then seconds later, he's like, hey. He responded. He I was responded. So, excited. so, um, so, you know, but people like that, like honestly, like he obviously just wants to get the good message out. And, yeah. you know, I think it's good, especially for like, you know, like me and you both talk about being Christian and, and being LGBT and the struggle that that is uh, sometimes. And, you know, just hearing messages like that, it, it brings hope. Yeah, so yeah. I, I really want to spread his message to our community. Yeah. Right. And Cause, we because so many people hate the church because the church, the church is just not it's not good sometimes. Yeah. And they're not good shepherds. And, you know, especially to the LGBT community, they they tend to push and and, and ostracize them instead of accepting and loving. Like and that's a reminder. The true message of Jesus. And right? that's a reminder to people that what the church does is not necessarily what your your God is really about. Yeah. And I we talked that. about this in our last um, last time. We talked about how if you're listening to our podcast, we're gonna talk a little bit about religion or um, talk about a, a little bit of politics and all kinds of different things. So if it makes you uncomfortable, maybe this podcast is not for you. Um, okay. I'm just reminding you guys of that right now because our podcast is about 
what we in our heart want to express out there to everybody. One thing that I, that I will mention is, is uh, DJ Minch and I are working on putting together a Bible study, mm -hmm. uh, an LGBT Bible study. Um, so we'll be putting information out about it this coming week. Um, we're going to do, uh, we'll do it here in the studio, but we're also going to offer a Zoom option. So if mm -hmm. that is something that you're interested in, I actually found a really good, it's actually a devotional book, but it's, it's for LGBT Christians and it's just so exceptional. So we're going to use that kind of to help guide us through Bible study. Um, and I, th I think it's just going to be really good. Uh, you know, like I think, and we definitely like, I like, I need more spirituality in my life. That's something that I've stepped away from, especially since I came out publicly and, you know, I'm kind of blacklisted from the Catholic church now. But that's okay. And we'll talk. We could talk about that um, for sure in other episodes yeah. about your me with my church and what happened with you at yours. Um, but we want to offer those things to people because having some faith um, in believing in a higher power is very important to us. Yep. Um, also, you don't ever really combine the two, right? Politics and religion, but. Really, this is our life, our world, mm -hmm. and all those things do come together as much as people don't want to talk about it. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that is happening right now in our country is that uh, Christianity in particular is being weaponized. So, you know, it's just very important. Like, I'm, I'm going to talk about registering to vote. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure you're paying attention. Make sure you're paying attention to your local elected officials because there's some craziness out there trying to get elected and trying to like just take power and so mm -hmm. we have to stand up and and as as christians as people in the lgbt community as women as men we have to stand up for our rights because right now they're really coming for some crazy stuff you know especially like i i think about like i'm i'm not a woman i'm not if you didn't if you didn't know that i'm sorry <laughs> to tell you I, I even have, though he calls himself the icon lesbian i am a lesbian icon but I am not a woman. <laughs> right. I, I have a whole story for you guys after hours about lesbians. But um, anyway, so my I forgot my whole point now because I started thinking about my story that I can't tell on air. Um, what was I saying? Lesbians? No, it had nothing to do with lesbians. <laughs> Christianity. <laughs> You're not oh, a woman. I'm not. A, I, I, I mean, I'm not a woman. And and one of the things as an elected official that I, I really, you know, and, and thankfully at the like local level, I really am not having to have any debates or discussions about, you know, abortion access as as a Catholic, as I do consider myself a Catholic. I, I'm, I don't I don't I don't personally like abortion. I don't know that that would be an option for me personally, but I'll never have to face that. Right. And I don't think that it is the right of the government to. Uh, legislates what a woman does with her body. That's it just is, crazy. It is a woman's. Those are that should that conversation be should strictly be between a woman and her doctor, right? And a woman is going to make the best decision, and the doctor are going to make the best decision for the woman and her health. So uh, the fact that these legis these these bans on abortion are coming out and they're trying to legislate even and and that's the thing too is it's not only abortion that they're after they're trying to come after birth control they're trying to come after like even things like ivf like right and how many how many couples straight couples gay couples lesbian couples rely on like that type of treatment to have children right yeah. because they want children or they're having issues i think I just changed the batteries, but it sounds like it's my mic might be cutting out. But anyway, it just it just makes me so sad that we're having these types of debates in 2024 in the United States of America. Like a woman should have the right to her body and, mm -hmm. and no one should ever try to that, take that away. It's just gross to me. It's so disgusting. Yeah, there's so, so many things about what's going on is disgusting. Yeah. Beside well, them. And then the whole Republican Jesus shit. That's just not Jesus. Like, that's just not the teachings of Christ. Like, read the Bible. Like, <laughs> I get, get it together. Like, yeah, it's just insane. Uh, Jesus was, you know, all about the poor. There's so many verses about, and that Father David talks about that in some of his things, about, like, rich people like jesus did not like rich people like his teachings are not favorable to the rich and the republican party is just doing some crazy things so, so in other words vote vote vote.org vote. or if you live in maricopa county you can go to uh the maricopa county elections dashboard at be ballot ready dot vote Period. so lots of ways to check out that's right. all right well before we're gone make sure you guys uh subscribe like our videos right in the comments, even if you put a little emoji or whatever, that helps 
um, our podcast get out there. Once again, thank you to our two special guests that joined us tonight. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Ernie Ortiz and <laughs> Taylor Renee. Hey, <laughs> West Siders. I should have just put West Side Edition. I had no idea you were from Maryville, Taylor Renee. We need another right, Maryville just edition. all Maryville. Mary. Yeah. Or there's this crew too. This breakdancing crew. Uh, oh my gosh! I wish I could remember now the the country that like breakdance and it was like so embarrassing. Oh, was it Australia? Was it Australia? That was first of all. I didn't even know that they had like that for the Olympics, but that was crazy. Well, there's this this crew, and they're they're huge. They're called Furious Styles Crew, and a bunch of them are from Maryvale. Period. Like Little House, Look Casita. <laughs> what was that? Foot, Foot Clan. Clan. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that stuff came and out of the West had, Side. We had a couple of um, people go to the Olympics from Maryvale. Okay. What else? So, just really quick, like, so I just heard this video this week. It was Cheech Marine. Who uh, he's funny. Have you ever met him, Ernie? Yeah. yeah. What's his name? He narrated Chato Chicken, which Chichin Chang, oh. oh yeah. Well, he's talking about like so Chicano culture, right? And they were talking about lowrider culture, and he was talking about because they were saying that lowrider culture started in New Mexico, whatever, whatever. And he was explaining where it comes from. So it comes from uh, back in the day when they would ride horses. On Sunday, they would like ride their horses around real slow and <laughs> calm, and like so that's where it comes from. Okay. Like the 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 purpose of the low riders was the you know to take the kind of the place of that, and because most car culture is like faster, right, quicker, but low rider culture is the opposite slow. of that. It's yeah. slow and chill, right? I just thought that was so cool. I'm like, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. We love so, it. Yeah, I, I love, even though lowriders are always a hot button issue in Tolleson, I don't ever want to get into that. No, we but are because we're going to, I want to have one here. We're yeah, I love, here. I love, I love lowriders. I, I want one. I want, I don't want to fix it though. So I probably need a husband <laughs> that's a mechanic, but I <laughs> My want My brother just spent so much money on his. Now he's going to get another one. If I'm ever rich, I'm going to own lowriders. I'm not going to fix them. Somebody else can fix them for me. But I just want to go cruising on Sunday. I should. It's in my DNA. <laughs> it's in my DNA. You know, we're, my dad was a We're going to start a, a, a gay uh, lowrider crew. A gay car club? Oh, a, my God. What are we going to call it? <laughs> Los Chicos? Los Chicos. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, <laughs> the remix car club. Um, yeah, so I just, yeah, I, I was saying my dad was a break dancer. Yeah. Yeah, he, he was, like, really into that. So when we were, like, kids, he tried to teach us or whatever. And, and you're like, like, no. That was not for me. My brother, though, my brother's a dancer. He, he got that from him. Not I was going to say, Michael dances. Yeah, Michael, my brother's a great dancer. And you know what? Uh, Melissa and Samantha are also dancers. I'm the only one. That's the frumpy one who can't dance. <laughs> I mean, but you know what, though? He loves to dance, but then he's going to bitch about it the next day. Yeah. No, but I like to dance to, like, Mexican music. Like, I get down. Me and my ex-girlfriend used to be, like, in the quinceanera circuit, like, <laughs> Mm -hmm. many, it's weird to dance with a guy like that many though. moons it's, ago it's just awkward like who leads like it's just weird so that's funny there i go being a homophobic gay <laughs> <laughs> anyway we're gonna be talking to the priest for a long time next week i know we're gonna be out <laughs> forgive us father for we have <laughs> sinned <laughs> dj image is a whore <laughs> i'm gonna tell him to check out your cup and see what's in it it right now i actually have water it's empty i turned water into wine just like jesus <laughs> it's oh, my juice yeah. box this week all right you guys well thank you for joining us tonight we're gonna be um every tuesday at nine o'clock now so remember that not eight o'clock no more 9, 9 p.m all right guys well thank you for coming and joining us here at the remix podcast remember to take care of yourselves and each other um spread love not herpes and please spay and neuter your twinks Good night, everybody. Bye I'm Jimmy Davis.